Hello, everybody. We're going to get started today on Chapter 7, Work and Conservation of Energy. The Khan Academy videos do a pretty good job of discussing work. And so I'm going to just jump right into the law of conservation of energy equation and how to use that to solve various situations. So the equation is found on your equation sheet. And basically it says the initial energy plus the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the final energy. Now, the initial energy is calculated by three different terms, the gravitational potential energy, the spring potential energy, and the kinetic energy. And the same thing for the final energy. So the equation ends up being seven terms. To solve problems in this chapter, what we're gonna do is those uh, eight steps that are shown here on the screen, a uh, sketch of the situation is nice. A lot of times it's provided, but it's good to have an idea of the, uh, well, it's required that you draw a sketch. And on that sketch, you need to very clearly say what your initial condition is. And you might want to write some notes as to what's going on with the object at that initial condition. Is it moving or not? Is it sitting against a compressed spring or not? Is it at a certain height, label that. The same thing for the final state, those same questions. Is it at a certain height? Is it moving? Is it sitting against a compressed or stretched string, spring, excuse me, either way. Um, on this same diagram, draw a horizontal line, use a dashed line as I will show you in my videos and label it as H equals zero and or say that that's where the gravitational potential energy is zero. This is really important. You can pick wherever you want. However, I strongly recommend that you look at your initial state and your final state. If they are two different heights, pick the lower of those, whichever one it is, and make that your gravitational potential energy equals zero line. If you do it the other way, you're gonna end up with some negative potential energy and that's kind of weird. You also need to draw a free body diagram. Okay, this allows you to figure out what forces are acting because the ones that are non-conservative are really important. You wanna circle all the non-conservative forces acting on the object at any point between your initial and final states. Okay, you circle those because for each of those forces, you're gonna draw a work diagram. Okay, write out your seven term conservation of energy equation. And then you uh, basically you're going to solve it from there. So we're going to go through some examples in the next few minutes. All right, example seven. An artillery shell is launched vertically upward from a cannon at ground level. Launch speed is 320 meters per second. How high will the shell go? You're going to use the conservation of energy. There are other ways to do this. Okay, it is quite possible to do this with kinematics, but that's not how we're gonna do it here. All right, and you don't need to keep looking at me, so I'm gonna turn off the video. There we go. I'm gonna grab my pen here, and we're gonna get started on this. All right, so sketch of the situation. So the object is here. And then it goes to there. Very simple picture. That's the initial state. That's the final state. Draw a dashed line. Gravitational potential energy equals zero. And I think that's all we really need. So we can say kinetic energy initial plus potential energy gravitational initial. And I'm gonna skip the spring term here until we actually get to a problem that involves springs and then I'll start writing in the spring term. Sorry about that. Okay, so it's a seven term equation, but if there's no springs anywhere, then I am okay with just reducing it down like this. 
we can look and we can see that the object was at ground level, which is where our gravitational potential energy initial is zero. So we can get rid of that. And we can say the kinetic energy final is also zero. All right, so following our steps, we also need to draw a free body diagram. Okay. The work by non-conservative forces is equal to zero because the object is in free fall and there's only the weight acting on it. So that means this term goes away and we are left with one half mvi squared equals mgh. We can divide all of the terms by m and we get uh, simplify down to h equals let's see b i squared over 2 g doing a little bit of algebra all at once there and then substituting the numbers in we get a height of let's see about 5200 feet i'm sorry meters okay and now we're gonna look at this in a little bit more detail on this energy bar chart. And so we can fill this in, and this is one of the things that you'll be tested on. So we'll say it had some kinetic energy at the beginning. How much? Well, one, two, three, four, I've, I've made five bars. It had zero gravitational, zero spring energy. There was zero work done by non-conservative forces. The gravitational force did work on it, but that's okay, that's accounted for with these two gravitational potential energy terms. And then at the end, zero kinetic energy. It had some gravitational potential energy, not any amount. Now, whatever amount we drew in initially has to have the same amount and then no spring potential energy. And that's how we do that energy bar chart. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this video here and then we'll pick up in the next video with some more.